I got hit, throat flown up in the air, landed on the ground, foot was on my chest. Uh, I threw it off. Up until that point, I, I thought I was the only one that was injured um, until they loaded me on the helicopter. Then I saw them load on my friend. Um, from that point, they flew us to another uh, forward operating base in Afghanistan. Um, so we went from two different bases in Afghanistan until we got to Germany. And then from Germany, we went to Bethesda, Maryland. So I picked up the phone and um, a gentleman asked if I was Mrs. Martinez. I said, yes, I am. He said, can you hold? I said, yes. And he um, passed the phone over to Gabe and um, he said, I just wanted to call and tell you that I've been hit. And I said, well, what do you mean you've been hit? He said, I was hit by an IED. And he said, are you okay? And he responded saying that he thought he had lost both of his legs. And I just started asking a hundred questions. Where are you? Where are you, are you coming home? Um, you know, who are you with? You know, where are you going? You know, just everything that I could think of. And um, it got to a point where he was so on such high dose of medication, he was falling asleep and he just said, I, I can't talk anymore, I gotta go. So when I got to Bethesda, Maryland, um, I, I got there a day before my family got there. And I was asleep and I woke up to a Marine Staff Sergeant. He comes up to me and he wakes me up and he's like, he told me he had a present for me. And Okay, so I wake up and in, com in comes walking my, f my whole family. When we went to Bethesda to meet him, I took everything that I could take with me in two suitcases and went to Bethesda and then stayed with him all through San Diego. And I didn't go home until March. I started off walking on my, my right leg, which is above the knee. Um, just because I still had some wounds that needed healing on my left side. It was February, middle of February or March, when I got my second leg. I got fitted for them, cast, casted, fitted and everything, and I was up and walking just within a couple days. When we moved to San Diego, the military had a couple of houses for us to go look at. And unfortunately, no matter how nice the house is, the military builds these houses to accommodate their families that they have now. And they don't always plan for the families that have special needs. The, the, the problems we run into is when we go home to visit in Colorado. Um, we got our house, my mom's house, her parents' house, and neither of them are, are suitable for you know, handicapped needs. Um, just going in, in, into the hallways, they're real small hallways. Um, Every single one of the houses has at least a step or two to get into the doorway. And so usually I'd have to have a couple people lift me up, put, put me inside. Um, the, the, being on the carpet, uh, showering, hygiene, just you're, everything. Once you're an amputee, everything is kind of a challenge. I mean, in my current home, there, there's places in the home that I've never been because of just the fact I can't get to it. And just to have a home that you could roam around, you could go any, any and every place in the home. That, that, that's huge. He will have access to do anything he wants by himself. And it's, I can't always be there to help him, and he doesn't always want the help. For Host Raw Troops to give us this home, it's, it seems like a thank you is not enough to compensate what they're doing for us. It's, it's a life-changing, life-changing gift, and it, it feels good to to feel the appreciation and the patriotism. I'm so grateful for everybody that gives any little piece to this puzzle to build this huge picture that's giving us so much of our life. And it's a gift that we'll forever have and forever be grateful for.